Hello everyone and welcome to this very special video where I will be reviewing the four of the top eight deck lists from their recent London International event, which I'm sure all of you are very curious about, um, not only to see the lists, which some of you might have already, some of you might not have, but um, mostly to try and understand what made them so successful above all the other Eveltal variants and Volcanian variants and Greninja variants that we saw that we saw get some play during the event. So we're going to be reviewing um, Michael Pramawat's first place deck, Robin Schulz's uh, top four deck, um, Pedro's Volcanian top eight deck, and Grafton's Greninja Talonflame top eight deck. So we're gonna start off with Michael Pramawat, the winner of the event. So this is the actual deck list he posted on some of the Facebook um, groups which we have for the TCG. Now, as you can see in your screen currently, there's, I think, between all of the top 8 lists, or probably every Veltal you see from now on, every Veltal garb at least, will have the same core of 55 to 56 cards. All of them will run at least a 2-2 Garbodor line, most of them will run 1 or 2, um, 2 Shaman I mean, some of them might run 1, like Robins, but most most will try to run 2. Um, there's a very big debate going on right now on the usefulness of Eveltal with the Fright Knight ability, some people say it's overrated, some people say it's the MVP of the deck. Um, it would be very interesting to hear um, Michael's opinion on how useful it was throughout the event. But taking a look at some of the games on the stream, I think it definitely has its uses. Because even though it is a bit energy intensive for something like the Mirror Match, it's not only there for the Mirror Match. Um, it's pretty great against Volcanion to try and lock up a Volcanion EX active. It's also pretty good against Mega decks to prevent their Spirit Links from working immediately. And I do think it's a valuable inclusion in the deck. But um, as we will see later on, there was a very successful variant of Eveltal, which didn't use a single one of these. So um, the rest is pretty standard. You see the 4 Sycamore, the 3N, 2 Lysander, but here is where Michael's um, list really excels, I think, or really shines. Not only is Eveltal Garp really solid against literally all of the metagame as of right now, but um, he also teched for the mirror, or at least that's what he said. So um, the first tech card for the mirror is Pokemon Center Lady. And as I believe I've mentioned in quite a few videos for now, um, every time we review a deck or during the streams, um, healing right now is really good because there's nothing crazy like Night March which can one hit KO your Pokemon really easily. There is Mega Rayquaza, there is um, Cernia's Rainbow Road, but neither of those can do it as easily as Night March could, right? They need a ton more resources, a ton more Pokemon in play, um, more energy as well, so it's not that simple. And they're not a big part of the metagame at the moment. At least Mega Rayquaza isn't. Rainbow Road definitely has a strong presence, but it did not do too well during this weekend. Um, or it did well, I mean, it got three, um, three appearances in top 32. But anyways, the point is, against every other deck, with Garbodor out and um, in mirrors, you're gonna be using a lot of White Cyclone, you're gonna be using Evil Bolt, but you're gonna be dealing 140 damage, 100 damage, um, 80, somewhere between those numbers. So healing off um, your Pokemon with Pokemon Center Lady can actually turn 2 hit KOs into 3 hit KOs. And that means your Pokemon survives one turn longer and therefore you get another hit in which could actually end up being the what makes you win the game, especially in mirror matches where you in theory have a 50-50 chance. Um, anything that gives you that little edge in the mirror match is something that might actually end up turning a 50-50 mirror match into a 70-30 simply because you have that differential card. And the other very important card here is the Team Flurgrunt. Now, there was quite a bit of talk before the tournament um, of Team Flurgrunt because usually what Eveltal likes to do is it has a Darkness Energy attached and then it attaches a TCE, um, uses Y Cyclone 
which deals 90 damage and you choose an energy attached to Evel Taliex and return it to or send it back to one of your bench Pokemon. So you deal damage, you can serve energy in case your Evel Taliex will be damaged. You also reduce the damage from opposing Evel Taliex's using Evil Ball. But there's the very small issue that Evel Taliex is left with a single energy. So if you time your energy grunt just right, you can actually leave an active um, Eveltal with no energy. Now, why is that important? Because besides Max Elixir, there's no way to accelerate energy in the deck. And Eveltal EX, if it has a Fighting Fury belt, it literally won't be able to attack unless you have the escape rope. The single escape rope that Michael runs, um, the single escape rope that most Eveltals are running because of the threat of Jolteon, and unless they have something like Olympia as well, that Eveltal EX is now stock active, energy less, all thanks to Timpler Grunt. And that could actually mean a free two prizes, which can allow you to get ahead in the prize exchange in something as important as the mirror. Now, obviously, energy removal is really good, and paired with Timpler Grunt, you actually get two enhanced hammers. So, there's also the possible scenarios where you remove two energy off of something like a Cernias. Um, off of something like a Mega Ray, where sure, using Enhanced Hammer to remove DCEs is really good, but then you only remove that one DCE, and they can, if they find another one, then they're good to go to attack once again. But if you remove both the basic energy through Templar Grunt and the special energy with an Enhanced Hammer, um, that can really set opponents behind. Now, I believe that card was also quite crucial from seeing the stream to for Michael to get some of his wins and it's definitely a very interesting inclusion and now what did he sacrifice to include both of these cards along with the delinquent which we saw used very effectively by by Pendarvis to win Fort Wayne regionals well the huge difference was the fact that um Michael doesn't run any trainer's mail as you can see in the current list there are zero trainer's mail which a lot of us and a lot of people um <laughs> a lot of people rather um use trainer's mail to boost consistency of decks right so michael opt opted not to use trainer's mail he opted to use a wider variety of support supporters <laughs> which sounds a bit redundant but support supporters in pokemon center lady in delinquent and in team for grunt but he didn't end up sacrificing the Fighting Fury Belt, the Float Stones, any Energy, or any Max Elixir, not even the Super Hunt. So, Trainer's Mail, what's the issue with Trainer's Mail? Trainer's Mail can either be a really crucial card, in the sense that it finds you your, your Versus Seeker that you need, your Fighting Fury Belt, your Float Stone to retreat, or it can simply find you nothing, or it like you see two pokemon and two energy in the top four cards it becomes a dead card or you're already going to use sycamore and the only card you find there is a sycamore so it becomes redundant and that's why trainer's mail is a good card but it can also be a really bad card and sacrificing that um i don't think reduces consistency too much and having the utility of both pokemon center lady and team flurry grunt and delinquent all in the same deck i feel like that's what put michael over the edge and allowed him to win the tournament he had the perfect balance between consistency between utility between energy between efficiency efficient attackers ability lock um stadium lock as well or bench lock rather with parallel cd so all of that allowed him to win the first ever pokemon international tournament in london and huge congratulations to him now that's the first list that we are taking a look the next one and i will go over the second eveltal of the day is robin schulz top four eveltal now he was heavily criticized honestly in the facebook groups i saw after he posted his list because of the debate of fright night that i mentioned earlier in the video um fright night seems to be loved or hated so people think it's amazing and the best card in the format and has the best attack in the format along with the best ability or people think it's rather mediocre and easy to 
play around if you have the right list and therefore um, not too useful. Now Robin did talk about his deck list a little bit during one of the interviews I got to see and he basically said I want the most efficient deck possible and the most simple deck possible as well. He already used a very similar list to this one to win or to make the top to make the top two to make the final of Dortmund regionals where he ended up coming up short and he repeated with basically the same deck. I don't remember exactly what he changed from one event to the other maybe the jurachi but aside from that his his list is pretty much the definition of consistency there's only one minor thing i would say regarding that he only played one shaman ex which is really surprising because that puts you in a lot of situations where you might um i mean sure you reduce the odds of starting with it but if it's ever priced and your only source of draw is an ultra ball you're in quite a bit of trouble but I'm guessing um, that didn't happen to him. It's definitely not often, not an often occurrence because if you only run one, the odds of pricing that one card are reduced, where if you run two, the odds of pricing one of the two are bigger. But I personally wouldn't feel safe. He did and he made it work all the way up until top four. Um, aside from that, the other standout cards are of course the Jirachi. Well, actually all of the Pokemon lines are standout. Jirachi is also pretty good in the mirror, removing the TCEs if your opponent decides to power up a very big Eveltal um, EX. It can also help slow down Cernias in Rainbow Road, can help slow down Rayquaza, although not in the metal version until you have Carpenter out. Can also help slow down or remove potential splash energy from Greninja. So it's definitely uh, an interesting cushion, and Jirachi is quite useful in other decks such as Greninja. So why not in Ivelto? And it would definitely, I'm sure it caught a, um, quite a few people by surprise. Now, he also runs a, a bit thicker Garbodor, Garbodor line with a 3-2. Um, 3 Trubbish, which increases the odds of starting with 1 Trubbish, but he also has the 4 Floatstone. So, pretty much if you're playing him, or if you're playing this list, you almost always will set up Garbodor. Like, it's pretty much guaranteed with the thicker line, with the more Floatstone. Um, it's pretty pretty good and then you also have four Evil Talix and he also talked about this um, in one of the interviews Evil Talix is the best attacker in his deck or in Evil Tal decks um, And he mentioned like if you start with one and it gets a little bit damaged you have the other one You have another one priced that means you effectively only have one Evil Talix left as an, attack as an attacker and that's something he wasn't comfortable with so he decided to play all four, and I generally can't argue with his logic. Like, if you're not playing the Fright Knight Ivelta, which is also a pretty good attacker, picture that scenario when you're playing against a Greninja break deck, even though they're a bit um, slower, or maybe against a Volcano deck, okay? You know you're gonna lock them with Garbodor and things like that, but if they get a hit off on your first Ivelta EX, you have one prized, and that means you pretty much only have one Ivelta EX left, to run through a potential two or three Volcano EXs, so I think his logic makes a lot of sense, and and I agree with it. I generally agree with it. Now, not only was he so preoccupied about prizing an Eveltal that he ended up playing four, but he also ended up running a town map. Now, this was also he another heavily criticized thing about his list. Um, I do personally think it's unnecessary, based on what he has. Um, there's no real clear one-offs except maybe Shaman, um, maybe Jirachi, but I don't think so. Um, that you'd really want to be in a hurry to get out of the prices. And the fact that you already play the 4 Evil Tall EX kind of counteracts the issue that he mentioned with the town map. But hey, it was in his deck. It's always useful to know. Like the more information you have um, in a game of Pokemon, the better. So it's not a bad play. I just think it could maybe be a more a better card to help against something like the mirror match against i don't know um so yeah that's one of the more interesting uh choices about his list and the final thing i want to talk about is the ace trainer now the ace trainer is definitely something that so far up until this point we had only seen in greninja lists and most recently in raikou electric lists and some of them not all of them but um, he went all the way to top four of the tournament with Ace Trainer and 
It's a good way to punish aggressive starts by your opponents, um, but since you literally can't search for the card in any way, getting access to it seems a bit hard. So, I mean, it obviously worked out for him in the end. I would love to know how well it actually did work out for him, like how often he was able to punish players because of that, how often he drew, he drew into it when it really was more effective than an end. Um, and I guess in the late game, if you are losing, but like 4-3 to three or 5-3 to three or something, um, or maybe even in a 2-1 scenario where you want to re um, eliminate your opponent's hand, but also you need to draw cards yourself to be able to stay in the game, I guess there I can see some merit for the Ace Trainer. Um, like I'll just talk a little about Greninja. Um, there's definitely scenarios where you'd rather use Ace Trainer in a 3-2 scenario instead of N because you get access to more cards. You get 6 cards instead of 3. And even though you give your opponent an extra card, it's a good trade-off as you won't necessarily break yourself through an N. So yeah, that's Robin's list. Um, I'm generally very very impressed by it. Um, I don't agree that it was heavily criticized. I mean, you literally can't argue with his results. Um, back to back finishes um, top two and top four in two of the biggest tournaments in Europe ever. Um, I don't know. I think the criticism isn't justified. Um, you obviously can always question things and you can make adjustments that you don't agree with. But the fact that he got top four is a huge, huge accomplishment. So, that's the second list I wanted to review today. The next one is the Volcanian list. Now, this list was played by Pedro from Spain. Um, you will see there's a Salamence. Now, that's just a placeholder that should be a Salamence EX, but I don't have any Salamence EX in my account, okay? But I will go, um, I will talk about that in a little bit. So, Volcanian has constantly been dismissed by a lot of people but it just keeps doing well and it makes sense for it to keep doing well it's a consistent deck it's a very fast deck and it doesn't necessarily need a ton of resources to a deal a lot of damage and b get going so um a lot of people saw the restriction on volcanian ex's attack volcanic keep and i i generally think at the beginning um, people might have been misplaying the attack, might have been misplaying their resources in order to reuse Volcanian EX's attack, but honestly with access to Olympia, which Pedro did run, with access to Pokemon Ranger, which Pedro did run, and with two escape ropes, along with floatstones, that minor um, setback from Volcanian EX's attack ends up being a non-factor. Um, you, if you're if you're familiar with the deck, if you know what you're doing, um, you can definitely play around that very easily um, since you have a ton of ways to switch your Pokemon out and remove that effect. And even your opponent is punished by using Lysander because they themselves um, allow Volcanion EX to attack once again. So um, the Pokemon line is very standard. Three Baby Volcanion, four Volcanion EX, two Shaman and one Hoopa. Um, a lot of people were saying Hoopa took out a lot of space. Um, you needed to focus on the baby, on the baby Volcanian rather. But since Carbonar is so popular right now and so good, um, baby Volcanian ends up being a little underwhelming, and people and, and people are choosing to accelerate energy through Max Elixir, which I believe is one of the best cards, if not the best card in the format at the moment. Um, so people are choosing to accelerate their energy with Max Elixir, so you don't rely on Baby Volcanion as much. Um, like any matchup where you don't see Garbodor, Baby Volcanion is absolutely fantastic. But against Evil Doll Garb, it's not going to be doing too much damage after turn 2 or turn 3, so that's when Max Elixirs become super valuable. And uh, in order to maybe secure a KO on their bench Garbodor, or um, simply to to keep the energy going with your Volcanians and be able to keep dealing damage. And now, as I mentioned, Solomon CX, I don't currently have one in my account. If any of you have a spur code card or would like to sell me a code card, I would really appreciate it because I can't trade for the card in this account and I really would love to use um, Solomon CX. But um, I'm gonna 
talk a little bit about it. Its first attack for a single fire energy and two double colorless energy deals 10 damage. Plus 50 damage for every EX Pokemon your opponent has in play. So um, this card was one of the most hyped cards going into the tournament and especially because people always have Shaman on their benches, um, people are playing EX decks such as Eveltal, such as Volcanion, such as um, Rainbow Road which has a lot of bench DXs. So Salamence EX can really punish um, a lot of those players and can simply come out of the blue and deal a ton of damage. Now Salamence EX fits really nicely into this deck because you can power it up with Max Elixir, you can attach fire energies to it through, Volca uh, through Baby Volcanion, and it's definitely a better attacker than Flareon EX um, in that it has a lot more potential but it also gives you a different attacker without water weakness so I guess that's not too important for Greninja because then Salamence will only be dealing 10 damage but um, in the mirror match it can actually be a really crucial card to have a good non-EX I mean to, ga to have a good attacker that's not weak to water because as you all know in the mirror match Things can get really tricky with Volcanion X being dual typing fire water and also being weak to water. So um, that's one of the interesting aspects of Pedro's list in the Pokemon department. Um, Dragon ITX was seeing play. It did make top eight at Volcanion with Dragon ITX did make top eight at Fort Wayne Regionals by Ahmed. But um, Pedro decided to go with Salamence, and I'm sure Ahmed might have done too if it had been legal for Fort Wayne. And yeah, aside from that, we have a lot of consistency. Um, he does run the one Skyfield and one Scorched Earth. Now, the stadium combination has been very a big topic of discussion for, Volca for, for Volcanion. A lot of people agree with Skyfield. A lot of people prefer Parallel City, even though you reduce your potential damage or your potential bench or your damage. If you get to play it before your opponent, um, you can actually prevent them from playing it against you yourself. Um, it's also a good tool to have against Rainbow Road, which is not exactly the best matchup for this deck. And aside from that, it's pretty much consistency. You have the 12 energy, you have the 4 Sycamore, the 4 Trainer's Mail. Um, the 4 Ultra Ball, the 4 Verse Seeker, the 2 End, the 2 Lysander, you have your Utility with Fisherman, with Olympia, with Ranger, um, you have Energy Acceleration with Max Elixir, it's all around consistency and that's one of the things that we should take from, from the winners of this tournament and from pretty much all the other tournaments so far. They might have one or two tech cards but 56 out of 60 cards are simply, they're consistent, they're the perfect balance between consistency and utility, which allow them to have options such as Olympia, such as Ranger here, such as Pokemon Center Lady and Delinquent in the Volta list, but they do not sacrifice consistency. And consistency is what is what reduces luck in Pokemon and therefore what gives you less variance in the sense that you seem to draw the same cards, you are able to execute your strategy. And you do that by playing four of the most important cards or having access to the most important cards. So that's Pedro's top eight Volcanian. And now let's go to my favorite, <laughs> of course, because I'm definitely biased, my favorite Greninja list that I've seen so far. Now, this list is by Grafton Roll um, from the Chaos Gym. And I'm sure they'll be putting a review of the deck as well pretty soon. So I'll leave a. I'll try to remember to leave a link to to their channel down below if you want to check them out. I definitely recommend you do because I do want to hear their thoughts um, on the on the experience on the tournament and hear how Grafton did in every round and how he fared against Eveltal because this list is a hundred percent built to counter a heavy Eveltal meta game. Okay, and I'm gonna go through the through the deck choices in a little bit, but. This is something that Grafton did and that I failed to do. I played Greninja myself. Um, I lost to two Eveltal Garbodors. I did put in one card to try and make that match better. But my my result at the tournament... Um, I mean, aside from Greninja breaking or whatever, which was honestly not a 
big issue at this tournament for me. It was simply I did not adequate my list to the meta game, to how the meta game was evolving. And Grafton did, and Grafton was rewarded by that. And I honestly think that if he had not bricked in game three or even game two against Michael Pramawat in top eight, he might have been the champion after all, because Volcanion is obviously a good matchup for Greninja, and his list was built to counter Yveltal. And let's see why. Okay, so first off, we have Talonflame. Now, ta people had been favoring the the non talonflame version of Greninja, including myself. Um, we were all using Jirachi. We were all sure that Jirachi was better. We were all worried about uh, Mega Deck, so we were running a ton of Faded Town and Bursting Balloons and things like that. But what does Talonflame accomplish? Before, during Worlds, Talonflame gave you a really good way to access cards when under Item Lock, when under Trevenant and when under Vileplume. But Trevenant is no longer viable, and Vileplume is a very small part of the metagame. And not only that, but it got a lot less good, I guess, without Vile Compressor. So we all shied away from Talonflame, but because you're pretty much guaranteed to have your ability shut down, not in every matchup, but in a lot of matchups, now the 40 damage from Aero Blitz is actually very, very good. Um, it kind of makes up for running less bursting balloons in this list but the fact that you have a big hp attacker that gets you cards and gets you set up is really important um the way you lose against the Veltal is by sacrificing too many things early on and then allowing them to build up a, a very big Veltal towards the end of the game whilst you have no abilities but town flame can actually take a few hits and Two hits from Talonflame equals one hit from Greninja. Um, during the early stages of the game, Iveltal will have a really hard time KOing Talonflame. And that makes Talonflame really viable. Really, really viable. And it also pressures your opponent into using N as their supporter of the turn, which decks are only running two or three up instead of all four. So it's either you, you, get, a, you get to keep the two cards you went for, or... Um, you don't get Lysandered, you don't get attacked on the bench, and yeah, I mean Talonflame is overall a really good card right now in Greninja, and I definitely agree it was the best meta call so far. So other than that, the Pokemon are self-explanatory, you have the 3443 line, you still always want to go for the turn to water duplicates despite running Talonflame, but as a follow-up to that, now you have Talonflame, okay? Now, it's definitely more fragile in the sense that when you don't start Talonflame, you're going to have a really bad time there. But odds are you will start Talonflame more often than not. And in a best of three, um, that's maybe good enough to secure a potential three games. Since any game where you don't start Talonflame, you're going to start Froakie. And if you do and you don't get too much going, you're probably going to lose a quick game too. So you might as well uh, move on to game three rather quickly. And now, the interesting choices. For supporters, we have 4 Sycamore and 3N, and 1 Mace Trainer. That's pretty standard, that's what we're all running these days, along with the 1 Lysander and the 1 Fisherman. But here comes the very interesting part. And yeah, this is not 100% the right list. Um, I forgot to take out the Trainer's Mail, and it should have all trouble, so give me one second. Give me one, one second. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's the list. Okay, yeah. When I didn't see the draw one, I was like, "Oops." Okay, but now this is the list. So he has the four dive ball, the four verse seeker, and the two ultra ball. Ultra ball is better, I guess, than level ball because you get to discard town flame to thin out your deck a little bit more. Um, it it's also useful to sometimes get rid of the Fisherman or the Lysander because it's easier to draw Verse Seeker later on in the game than those actual single cards. So having the Ultra Ball is actually really useful and that this card actually benefits you instead of hurting you. There's very few instances where it will actually hurt you. But these are the two cards I want to talk about. We have Enhanced Hammer in Greninja. And not only do we have it, we have three of them. How does Iveltal beat Greninja later on in the match? By powering up a huge Iveltal EX. 
How do you punish that? By using Enhanced Hammer. If you Enhanced Hammer away, um, energy, the double color is energy, that's how you prevent the Voltal from taking one hit KOs and allows your Greninjas to live at least two hits. And then what happens after Greninja attacks? It has no energy. So even if it takes a hit, you get to cure it with max potion. You get to heal off all the damage and therefore make your Greninja get off three attacks instead of two. And that means a single Greninja can take down at a nivel Talix, which is really, really good. And if they somehow walk into a Bursting Balloon, which now you only have two of, um, a single Greninja could potentially take down one nivel Talix and get another attack off on a different one. So that's really, really good. Um, you still have the three Faded Town. I think if he had rough seas instead of faded town he would a hundred he would pretty much be uh, at least a 70 30 favorite against the Veltal every time he started with Talonflame but would still be pretty good if he didn't start Talonflame um rough seas is a card that I included in my list and it was definitely very important for my Veltal games it's what allowed me to have a chance but I should have been playing four like or at least three like um the other Greninja players did at top 32 not just a single one so that was my mistake, but these are the two cards that really make this Greninja and that I'm sure once we hear from Grafton and his report that he will say they were the key to his success and they were the key to him beating Eveltal Garbodor and having a positive matchup against Eveltal Garbodor. So yeah, um, that's the four lists that I wanted to review, um, no gameplay, obviously I can't play with all four decks and I'm still in London, I do go back to Mexico um, next week, or rather today, <laughs> so I will be in Mexico by tomorrow and I will get to working on next week's videos, but um, I would like to know what you guys want me to do next week, um, would you like me to use the four decks next week, would you like me to, I do intend to stream over the weekend, but um, would you like me to use these decks? Would you like me to review other decks from London? Would you like me to to use some rogue decks? Because right now I've pretty much covered every single deck. I mean, there are variants and there are one, two, three, four, five card differences, if you will, from one list to the other. But the basics of every single deck have been covered by now. So what would you like to see? If you could let me know in the comment section down below, that would be amazing. And yeah. That's gonna be it from me today, guys. Um, please leave a like if you can. Um, YouTube did change its um, its algorithm or something, so the more likes, the more comments, etc., video gives, the better. And yeah, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, follow me on Twitter if you want to to get um, notices and things about when I'm going to stream probably over the weekend i will be doing a tcg english stream and a tcg spanish stream and that will be all for me today um huge congratulations to all the players that did well at london i myself went five and four um got 140 second place i lost the last round to not make top 64 which was very devastating um but i made a bad i don't think i made a bad medical because greninja was obviously viable for the tournament but um, I didn't adequate my list enough to a uh, changing metagame. I was still stuck with the mindset of the Megas Pokemon metagame. And I still had a ton of Faded Town and the 4th Bursting Balloon. But good players can simply bypass Faded um, Bursting Balloon. And, and Evoltal is now the metagame. So I should have made the right call to play 4 Rough Seas instead of 3 Faded Town and 1 Rough Seas. But anyways... That's the topic for another day. Thank you guys so much. Subscribe as well if you haven't yet. I'm really surprised. I talked to a lot of you over the weekend. And a lot of you told me that you watch my videos. But you don't subscribe. Um, a subscription really helps the channel as well. And I will see you guys next week. With um, Road to TCG Worlds. As always. Thank you guys so much. And bye bye.